all right so let's let's come back to different networks and what we are going to do is we are going to determine these metrics for different kinds of networks so let's start as we did with the linear array right so so linear array is just a set of nodes right which are connected in a linear fashion with links and we are going to take the number of nodes to be p number of processors to be p okay right so what is the number of links yeah degree max degree two the diameter in terms of p p minus 1 yeah and finally the bisection width so we already spoke about this this is 1 okay so i'm going to draw a table and let's try to fill this up we will keep coming back to this okay so this is clear right So this is the entry for linear array. So why is bisection width important by the way? Why is bisection width important? Because for a lot of communication, the bisection width determines how long it's take, going to take for the communication to complete. The higher the bisection width, the better it is, right? As a matter of fact, the bisection width gives you the lower bound for doing uh, various collective communications, right? MPI collective communications like all to all and so on. Okay, so the higher the bisection width, it means the more connected it is and uh, therefore you can, you know, flow data faster from one half to the other half, right? So if you're doing collectives, it's quite useful. So we want high bisection width, we want low diameter, we want low degree, we want low number of links, right? But of course we have to compromise somewhere. I can do a simple trick to bring down the diameter and the bisection width in a linear array, right? What is that trick? The trick is simply to set up one roundabout connection, right? This is actually called a 1D torus, right? So these such connections are called tori, torus or tori, right? Torus means like a roundabout thing, right? Let's examine a torus, right? So what changes in a torus? What is the number of links? P, yeah, roughly the same. As we proceed, we are not going to bother too much about plus ones and minus ones, right? The order is more important. What is the degree? It's still two, it's the same degree, same number of links. What about the diameter? The diameter is suddenly cut to half. And the maximum distance between any two nodes is p by 2, right? These are bidirectional links. And what is the bisection width? Now, how many links do I have to cut? Two. two. And we've seen this, right? When we were talking about broadcast, remember? When we had a linear array, we were able to do broadcast in only one direction, right? And we were taking some time. And uh, if you recall, when we had a torus, we had the roundabout link, we were able to send in both directions and cut the time to half. Right? So that's a direct indication to you that you know bisection width determines the time it takes to complete operations. All right, let's carry on. The next step is something called the 2D mesh. Okay. What does a 2D mesh look like? So it looks something like this. It's just a grid of processors, right? This is also very practical. It's a very common architecture. There have been many supercomputers which have been built using 2D grid uh, interconnects, right? And as a matter of fact, 3D and 5D and so on, right? So let's say that you have P processors. So this is in an arrangement, let's say of root P cross root P, right? Root P rows, root P columns, okay? So let's, let's look at various parameters. What is the number of links? P. Yeah, so again, there are all the corner nodes are special nodes. They have some asymmetry. So we will not bother about that, right? Okay, but even if we wanted to count exactly, in each row, if you see, you have how many links? You have root P minus 1 links, right? There are root P nodes and there are root P minus 1 links exactly between them. And how many such rows do you have? You have root p such rows. 
and then this is for rows and similarly for columns it's exactly symmetric so it will be two times this yeah and it's roughly so i'm i'm going to stick with some approximation so it's about 2p right okay Th that's that's the important number it's nearly 2p it's actually slightly less but we won't bother about that so let me just fill up this entry so the number of links is 2p which is not bad right you've just doubled the number of links from a from a linear array but what advantage do you get by doing that so what is the diameter so which which are the furthest nodes leftmost top and rightmost bottom right so you have to cross root p minus 1 links here and root p minus 1 links here right so your diameter is 2 times root p minus 1 which is approximately 2 root p yeah diameter is approximately 2 root p this is approximately it's fine degree not bad just 4 that's the max degree any node has yeah and what about bisection width so i'll just make a cut down the middle right how many links are crossing this root p okay so the diameter is root p so look at this right this is quite impressive from a linear array so just by doubling the number of links and doubling the degree which is not too complicated you can afford to do that your diameter has come down drastically by a factor of you know root p and your bisection width has gone up by a factor of root p right quite good okay and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a wrap around link i'm going to make this a 2d torus how do i make it a 2d torus i make it a 2d torus by adding these links wrap around links along every row and wrap around links along every column this is a 2d structure so it's actually easy to implement right in in real life you can actually lay it out on a floor you can lay out these nodes on a floor and connect them up using links right just imagine trying to build a fully connected network if if you were to actually lay it out just doing the wiring is a nightmare okay so there have been supercomputers built as i said right with 5d torus and all so doing the wiring for a 5d torus is a nightmare okay fully connected is like out of the picture you can't just directly connect it up right you can't lay a cable straight away you've got to put it to the ceiling and take it to the other end and now when all these when you when you connect all of these up they are all going through the ceiling just imagine the kind of complication right they they send the wires under the floor over the ceiling all kinds of things so it becomes quite a messy affair it may not uh, resonate right now with you but uh, when you actually try to build these systems these small small things uh, become a major issue so all of these add to the complexity but the good thing about 2d meshes is that you know the wiring is in a 2d two dimensions uh, which is natural for us and and it's easy to build okay so i set up the studio torus added the wrap around links what changes so what about the number of links well just a few more links got added not much right so actually it turns out to be uh, about 2p only right roughly 2p of the order of 2p degree is still 4 yeah diameter what is the diameter in this new network what was the diameter in in the earlier one 2 root p is it still 2 root p no what is it now which are the furthest pair of nodes can you tell me one pair of furthest nodes okay if this is one node which which node is furthest to this node yeah okay depends whether you start your indexing from 0 or 1 but yeah this is the node right so you need to now you need to go root p by 2 links down and then root p by 2 links to the right right so this is root p so so this is for 2d torus right number of links is still about 2p this is still 4 the diameter is now root p yeah what about the bisection width so just look at this blue line right 2 root p now you are having to cut double the number of links earlier you were cutting one link in each row now you have to cut the wrap around link also okay so you have to cut twice the number of links 
good. Again, uh, similar to what we saw when we converted a linear array to a 1D torus, the same thing happens over here. Your diameter becomes half and your bisection width doubles, okay? 